I do want to welcome you here. We're here to worship God. I hope that's the reason you came. Uh, he is worthy of all of our worship, and that's why we are here. Uh, we are the body of Christ, meeting together to be encouraged, to give Him praise and honor that's due Him. I want to welcome all our members, uh, those who come frequently, and anybody, if you're a, a recent guest or a new guest, we are so thankful that you are here to worship with us. I, I pray that you feel welcomed. Um, so after a gift for you, First time guest, recent guest, go right through the, door, the welcome. Desk. Um, also, there's some cards in front of you if you fill that out, and anybody can fill that out if you ever have a prayer request. We want you to know that if you write a prayer on there, we will pray for you. And if you're a guest and have any question in the world, write it down there, and we will get back with you to answer that. But I want what I want you to do right now is shake hands with some people. Congratulate everyone. You all may be seated.
give them an opportunity to come up here one by one and to simply state their name and where they have graduated from and any immediate or, or long-term plans they might have. And, and as you come through and, and, and share, just, just find a spot here until we can make a nice little line across, across the front. Uh, Joshua, start us off. Joshua Reams, and uh, I'm graduating from Steel Road Christian Academy, and I will be attending Liberty University in the fall with a major in accounting. My name is Matthew Bailey. I plan to go to BCTC in the fall, and I'm graduating from Woodford County High School. I hope to become a conservation officer. <laughs> BCTC, and then I'll West Kentucky University and double major in English for journalism. Hi, my name is Mandy Head, graduating from Woodford County High School, and I hope to be graduate. Uh, I hope to be majoring in education um, while I play softball at Union College. My name is Hunter Johnson, and I'm graduating from the Johnson Academy, and I hope to be a vet one day. My name is Claire, I'm graduating from Washington, and I'm going to major My name is Sarah, I'm graduating from High School in Eastern University Forensics. I'll be from the Kent in Eastern Kentucky and in occupation minor. Um, I'm from West Kentucky, and I'll be at the University of the Fall and majoring in administration minor in Spanish. My name is Peter, and I'm graduating from County High School, and I'm going to be a pre pharmacy. Give free to these students. Come to some share about being passionate, courageous, and the recent flat called the count. And it just walks through. The gospel has influence for orphans, for widows, for those who are in poverty, or about things in life. As words speak, our For these, dear grace, we do in the name of your son Jesus. You sent your son into the world to save us, students. And what a poet it is those who sent your son to save and into the world to the hands and feet of Christ. Their, their mouth and with their heart, with their energy, they go ambassadors of, of your dear son who is worthy of a witness. Lord, you 
Head to protect them. Journey. With give passion and courage and conviction to be firm in this God fill them control them of your grace fill them by of your son to live worthy of calling with which they have been called things in Christ. from these graduates one more time. Continue working. You stand up. They're helping us today. to grip.
Lord, Lord, I love you. Lord, I I've got three microphones up here. This is awesome. <laughs> and five pages of notes. No, just kidding. Great thing about having me preach is you'll really appreciate Pastor Michael when he comes back. <laughs> when I was a uh, pastor in Bowling Green, Kentucky, we had a church come down. Actually, Buck Run Baptist Church came down and and built, uh, we had a, such a, a blossoming college group, we, had, we didn't have a classroom for them. And Buck Run Baptist Church came down in uh, four and a half days and built a 20 by 20 classroom on the back side of our church, uh, Burton Memorial Baptist in, uh, in Bowling Green. And, and at the end of the week, everybody was kind of racing to get stuff put together and put back and, and get on the road back home. It was a, you know, amazing to get what they did done in, in four and a half days to have a fully functioning Sunday school classroom. Um, but one of the tasks uh, <laughs> that was assigned to me was to take a metal breaker back from where we rented it 
Does anybody know what a metal breaker is? Those aren't small. I didn't know what a metal breaker was, but I'll never forget what a metal breaker is. Um, and uh, everybody was kind of racing. And they said, uh, I said, I said, I can, can I help? And they said, well, you can take this metal breaker back to, the, to where we rented it. And I said, well, does it fit in a van? And uh, they said, we'll make it fit. And so we had this Honda Odyssey, emphasis on had this Honda Odyssey, and they ran that metal breaker from the front window all the way to the back. And uh, so I was driving the, the van and uh, trying to get it back to 31W where, to return it. So I already had this metal breaker all the way up to the front window. Well, uh, if you're familiar with Bowling Green at all, there's a, the 31W is pretty narrow. <laughs> there's, a, there's, there's, I mean, there's, you know, three inches to the right of the street are telephone poles. There's just, it's just really, really tight. And, uh, and sometimes it's kind of awkward uh, to turn. Well, I, this was one of those moments where I was at my place where I needed to turn into the rental place. But there was a van facing me that needed to turn this way. I needed to turn that way. I couldn't see around the van. It couldn't see around me. So we sat there in a standoff for several minutes. I mean, lit, I mean, it was several minutes. It, I, mean, I mean, one of us should have just pulled on through and gone around, but we didn't. Just sat there. And, uh, and so I thought, well, you know, nobody's coming. Let me see if I can't just nudge. Nudge my way around to see what's on the other side of that van. There was something on the other side of that van. <laughs> and... We collapsed. The Jaguar. Not a Jaguar. Uh, a friend Jaguar. And hurt. But I was informed in a different language. Was that that Jaguar had just gotten fixed. And, uh, and so, so anyway, um, that does a lot for your insurance. Uh, but... But it was a blind spot. It was, I mean, I just, I just couldn't see. And, you know, if I had to do over it again, I would either wait the guy out or just pull on through and go around. That makes it you, I guess sometimes you make once, then you just never, ever, ever, ever make again. Um, and for, for several years, my little twins kept, kept reminding me of the van that I broke uh, because that van was totally total. Uh, and so, uh, well, uh, we're talking about uh, a little bit about blind spots. To our graduates today, and there's a book that I've read, uh, been recently just came out. I encourage you to get it, uh, called Blind Spots. I was originally why I was going to get our our students, but it was on back order. It was so sought after. Well, uh, I want to encourage students to watch for your blind spots. Watch for your blind spots. There are um, there there are good ha- good characteristics that you have. But you can be blind to where you're lacking. Uh, our goal for you is that you would be great commission Christians. Great commission Christians. Everybody say great commission. Great commission. We need you to do that. And so you cannot be a, a thoroughly effective great commission Christian if you have certain blind spots. And in the book Blind Spot, it talks about two key blind spots that people have a tendency toward. And I think culturally, you will have a tendency toward, okay? Uh, one is a blind spot toward courageousness with truth or a blind spot toward compassion. Um, that is where I think they're challenged to, to, to be courageous in truth, but also a passionate Christ. What happens is... Uh, Sometimes, you, I don't know if you ever noticed, but sometimes when you have a really strong strength, there's a flip side weakness. I don't know if you ever noticed that. Is it good to be courageous in truth? To, be, to stand for truth? Is that great? But when you stand for truth and that's your main thing, but your blind spot is compassion, guess what? Nobody will hear the truth that you are so bold about. That's a That's fact. And if you are tender-hearted and compassionate, but your blind spot is boldness with truth, 
Likewise, you're going to find yourself handicapped in the Great Commission. What we want want from you is to be compassionate and courageous Christians so that you would be effective in the Great Commission. I pulled together a terrible Venn diagram that you can see up here. Um, Made this uh, uh, about 9.45 this morning. Um, and you can see, see up there, kind of, there's this kind of sweet spot. Sweet spot. There are people who, are, who tend to be bold with the truth. They know all the Sunday school answers. They know all the arguments. They can debate you. They'll debate you over the color of the carpet. They know, they're, pat, they're convinced of what they're convinced of, right? But their blind spot is compassion. And there are people who are sweet empathetic souls. And let me tell you what the potential danger of that is. The potential danger on the courageous with true side is that you'll just simply be a jerk. That's the danger. That's the, that's the wreck you want to avoid is taking such a strong stand for truth minus compassion that you're such a jerk that nobody cares about the truth that you, you profess. In fact, professing it under, undercuts it altogether because people will say, well... I don't know if I want to believe what that guy believes. I don't know if I want to believe what that girl believes because she doesn't seem like a very nice person. You ever seen that? I I lament in social media, God bless America for social media. There's so many people in social media who say things that are absolutely true and they say it in absolutely the wrong way. Amen? In all caps. (laughs) If you're an all caps person, repent. Repent. Um, I had some, I had lots of seniors who were, who, who did email and they, and I never could tell whether they were angry with me or they just did not know how to turn off all caps. <laughs> it was a lovely service Sunday. I was like, that's all caps. Is she being sarcastic with me? Uh, but some, some of you are going to be all caps Christians where you're just, you, Hey, nobody has to ask you twice for your opinion. And, and, and Lord willing, your opinion will be undergirded by the truth of God's word, but your blind spot is compassion. Now here's just a subtle point. If, you're, if your lean is compassion, and I just want to plead with you because I think this, students, is where your greatest temptation is going to lie. Your temptation is going to be to abandon truth so that you will appear more compassionate to the culture. Does that make sense? That is going going to be your temptation. And just like everybody has strong and weak points, compassionate people do like to be liked. They don't like to make people angry. They don't. And the temptation is going to be to downplay God's word, to downplay truth, to downplay things that are politically and culturally unpopular. Why? So people will applaud your compassion. Um, I want to plead with you to be ambassadors for Christ. To be ambassadors for Christ. In 2 Corinthians 5, 17, we are told, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. The old has passed away, the new has come. All this from God, who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the message of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was was reconciling the world to himself and giving us the message of reconciliation. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ, God making his appeal through us. We implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. So we are ambassadors for Christ, and, and some of you uh, who, who may be following me on Facebook, all five of you who give me likes every now and then, know this is a, this is a burr in my saddle that we get, on, that we get off balance, that we get off balance. Uh, let me give you a quote from Kevin DeYoung, who I, I greatly appreciate. He's a fairly young pastor. He says, if you think you can magnify grace by shrinking truth, you will find that you make people blind to both. If you think you can magnify grace by shrinking truth, you will find that you make people blind to both. I love 1 Peter 3.15 where, where, where Peter says, But in your hearts honor Christ the Lord as holy, always being prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks you 
for the reason, for the hope that you have within you. The courageous people say, yes, always be prepared to make a defense. We are tenacious defenders of the faith. But what does he keep on, what does he go on to say? Yet do it with gentleness and respect. You are gentle warriors for truth. You are Christ's ambassadors. And, and here's the thing. I want to plead with you all to study the life of Jesus Christ. One of my, one of my great fears in the church in, in recent generations is that we've assumed Christ. We've assumed Christ. Students who, who go through youth groups and go through countless programs maybe have never read a gospel from, from beginning to end. And the Jesus that they worship, the Jesus that they talk about, the Jesus that they cheer about at camps is maybe a Jesus who's only this, but not this, or only this, but not this. But if you go back to that diagram where we have courage and compassion, Jesus is in the sweet spot in the middle. Uh, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, glory is of the only begotten of God, full of you may know those two things, full of grace and truth. Jesus is amazing, isn't he? Isn't Jesus amazing? I'm going to say that three times in the hopes of getting an amen. Isn't Jesus amazing? Amen. Study Jesus. If you study the life of Jesus, uh, one pastor once said, if you walk through the Gospels and you, with, a, with a pencil... And you know, students, I want to challenge you to do this. You walk through the gospel of Mark, or walk through the gospel of Matthew, and you jot down every time that Jesus is tender, and write down next to it every time Jesus is tough, you're going to find a beautiful blend in Christ. Because one minute he's weeping over Jerusalem, the next minute he's turning over tables. Jesus did not trade truth for grace. He had compassion that is unrivaled by anybody, but he was zealous for God's truth, and he understood that downplaying God's truth would, would also be to rob people of the compassionate answer they needed to rescue them from their sin. I want to think about the call to take courage and compassion, and then to go on mission for Christ. You will need both. You will need both desperately. You'll need the boldness of Peter and John. In Acts 4, 13, it says, Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and perceived that they were uneducated common men, they were astonished. But they recognized that they had been with Jesus. So don't assume that boldness contradicts humble following of Jesus Christ. In fact, if you're humbly following Jesus Christ, that might mean that you're a bolder person than you have been. Does that make sense? The world will tempt you to say, tempt you to believe, boldness always equals arrogance. No, it doesn't always equal arrogance. It could, it could mean confidence in God, confidence in God's word, and a trust in what God has said is true is reliable, is sufficient, is authoritative. You don't need to apologize. You didn't write the Bible. You don't need to apologize for it. If you, if you wrote your own Bible, you might have to apologize for being bold about what you're telling. But it's not your Bible. It's God's Word. You don't need to apologize for being confident in what God has said. So boldness does not contradict the following of Christ. And certainly compassion doesn't, does it? Think about Christ's ministry. Think about John chapter 8. I love John chapter 8. Remember the, the woman caught in adultery? It's one, of those, it's one of those stories that people quote, quote most of it, but not all of it. They're, they threw this woman down in front of Jesus and said she was caught in the act of adultery. Jesus bends over and draws in the ground. One minister once said, I bet he was writing down the sins of everybody that was gathered around. You're a liar. You're a thief. And putting an arrow to each one of them. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Um, 
But he showed compassion upon the woman caught in adultery. But then he said, go and leave your life of sin. That's Christ. He didn't say, well, if I downplay God's standard, she'll really feel more loved by me. Because he knew the most loving thing for her would be to actually leave her life of sin. The temptation for us in this generation will be to downplay the truth about our mortality, our, our, our immorality, our need for Christ in order to be uh, more socially acceptable in this culture. I love Jesus with the Samaritan woman in, who comes and, and he, he breaks social tradition uh, to share a moment of conversation with her a Samaritan woman, it was kind of scandalous that he's sitting there, a Jewish teacher talking with her, but he, 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 he says, I'm going to show compassion to this woman. This woman is startled that this man would share a drink with her. That's the compassion of Christ that says, there's nobody that I won't share a meal with. There's nobody I won't share a, a cold glass of water with. But then he doesn't leave her in the dark about her spiritual state, does he? He doesn't. In fact, to do so would have been uncompassionate. One of my favorite little anecdotes was we were doing missions to Romania. I've been to Romania four times. I've been to Spain twice ministering to Romanians. Long story there. But one of our main things was medical missions. Medical missions. And so what would happen is we were given two bags... To, to go to Romania. One bag had your clothes for two weeks, and the other bag had uh, medical supplies. A uh, lot, you know, antibiotics and ointments and all, all, all glasses. I mean, so you, you carried both of those things with you. And uh, one time we had a Romanian pastor come over to give us some encouragement before we went on our mission trip. And this young Romanian pastor said, Thank you for the antibiotics. Thank you for the glasses. Thank you for the salve and the ointment. But if you come to Romania and you don't bring the gospel, you have not ultimately been loving to my people. Did y'all get that? We need both. We need the kind of compassion that would run into a burning building to save somebody. And we need the kind of courage that says, I will tell the truth even if it makes me unpopular. Even if it costs me my job someday. We need to be like Jesus Christ. Because Jesus Christ, how did Jesus Christ make such a difference? His compassion drew people to him. And when people were drawn to them, he did not pull punches on the truth that they desperately needed a savior. I love the example of Stephen. Stephen, one of those first deacons who became, became a, quite a preacher. Uh, he actually had one sermon and then died. Um, but he was a servant. He was one of, the, one, of the, one, of the, one of the guys they said, we need somebody to wait on tables. We need somebody to feed widows. You know who, who's good at that? I bet Stephen would be awesome at that. He would love those people. But Stephen also preached the word unapologetically. And as he preached the word, those who were religiously opposed to him ripped their garments. And they surrounded him and they picked up stones and they stoned sweet, compassionate, table waiting, wid widow feeding Stephen to death. And what do we see from the lips of, Jesus, of, of Stephen before he dies? He prays to God for their forgiveness. That's a sweet spot of compassion and courage. I want to plead with you, students, to be self-aware. Be self-aware. When you go away to college, be self-aware. And some of you may have very different experiences depending on what college you go to. But some of you will go to college 
And in your, if you take a philosophy class your first semester, guess what? That philosophy professor in maybe a secular university will be right here in your face. And the conversation has changed, by the way. It, will, it has evolved from when I was a student. Uh, can, can Christians be so stupid to believe these things? The conversation is now evolving to this. Can Christians be so hateful to believe these things? We send you out in many ways, like Paul said in Acts 20, as sheep amidst the wolves. Cling to Christ. Fix your eyes upon Christ. If you will imitate Christ, you will be a courageous person. You will be a compassionate person, and you cling to both of those. If you're a courageous person, you, you probably need to find some people in your life who will make you more humble about it. About it. If, you're, if, you, if you feel like you know the, the answers to every Bible trivia quiz backward and forward, but you're not an empathetic, humble person, you probably need to find some humble, compassionate mentors in your life. You probably need to go find, you probably need to go down to the local homeless shelter or to uh, a place where people are treated for drug addiction. You probably need to go to areas where people have been marginalized. And you probably need to spend time with them because that will, that will, that will give you wisdom for how to dispense truth in grace. And if you lean toward compassion, I want, I want to plead with you. Uh, search the scriptures for truth. Get in your word. Study at the feet of, of people who are engaging these cultural arguments. Kevin DeYoung, if you can find anything written by Kevin DeYoung, find it and read it. Uh, this book by David Platt is not by accident that you've been given that book. Uh, it's not by accident that he calls people to compassion and conviction. If you're, if you're naturally empathetic, that is a wonderful trait. Be on guard that the world doesn't tempt you to push truth aside so that people will applaud you for that compassion because ultimately, your compassion might leave somebody in their sin if you abandon truth. What we need desperately is Christians to go out into the world and love the socks off of their neighbor. We need Christians who are willing to, to walk into a burning building for their neighbor. We need Christians who are willing to take the shirt off their back and take the, 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 the money out of their back pocket to be genuinely and sincerely inconvenienced on behalf of their neighbors to the end that when you share the truth with them, they're confused. They're confused because they'll hear you say things that is, are offensive possibly. But then no wonder. I don't know anybody more compassionate than Mandy. I don't know any more, one more compassionate than Claire. She is saying things that Christians believe that, that bother me. Does that mean that she's unloving? Our prayer is that our, our unbelieving neighbors and our unbelieving folks in our culture would say, something's amiss. Maybe I need to listen to what this young man has to say. Maybe I need to listen to what this young woman has to say because they love me. They encourage me. Be, if you're in a dorm, you be the most encouraging person in your dorm. If you're on a team, you be the most encouraging person on your team. You be the most sacrificial person on, uh, on, on in your clubs to the end that when somebody is seeking answers, they will migrate to people who have cared for them. And when they migrate to you, you give them Jesus unapologetically. If you have a bulletin, I just want to give you this, this little illustration. Uh, um, just flip into your sermon note side. This is just a nice little reminder. I've got to the point where I have to take my glasses off to read, and that makes me sad. I was taking pictures... I was taking pictures at a, at, a, at a fifth grade event, and I kept doing, I, I was, I kept, I kept doing this. Uh, 
tap in the middle. It's like, it just won't get in focus. Over and over again, just, it won't get in focus. And finally I said, oh, now it's in focus. <laughs> That's where I am. Man of tw- married, married 20 years, now can't see things up close without taking his glasses off. But if you'll take this, this little sermon note sheet and, and we'll see if this works. You hold it, hold it 12 to 15 inches in front of your face. If you have a camera, take a picture of this. This is probably neat. Don't overthink it. Turn off your peripheral vision. I want you to close your left eye and look at the cross. Close your right eye and look at the face. Something happens when you do that. When you you close one eye and you look at the face... The cross disappears. When you close your left eye and you look at the cross, the face disappears. I want to challenge you, students. If you want to be balanced, compassionate, and courageous, you fix your eyes upon Jesus Christ. You fix your eyes upon Christ. And what you'll find is that you will take a a backstage. When you're the center of everything, there's all kinds of temptation. My reputation becomes the most important thing. But if you'll turn a blind eye to yourself and fix your eyes upon Christ, you'll find the sweet spot of commission. Courageous, compassionate commission. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word. And Lord, I just pray. Pray that you would speak, continue to speak. Um, through the song uh, we're going to sing Lord I need you and Lord we need you we, we need to be in your word so many people are trying to define Christ to suit their own agenda for their, from the right or on the left Lord help these students to pursue the Christ of the scriptures find, find, and find him full of grace and full of truth Let them fix their eyes upon the path that Christ has set for them and not veer to the left nor to the right. I pray, Lord, that there would be a a powerful, potent witness in whatever school and whatever career they go, that there would always be a compassionate, convictional Christian wherever they are. We pray these things in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Let's stand, Jonathan, come forward with me, and let's stand and we'll sing in response to the Lord.
exciting chapter in their lives, Father, just um, for those of us that have been there, we, we remember and we know what it means to be a new grad and life spread out before us. Father, we thank you that they've been part of this church, some since when they were born and others more recently, but just um, for their membership and fellowship here, Father, we just, we've been blessed by them. And we thank you for the men and women in this church that have helped raise them in you to give them courage and compassion and father we just pray that in the coming weeks and months and years that they will remember the lessons and the leadership and the mentors that they've had here and just build on that and just go out and be bold and just love you jesus father we thank you for for our pastors father for brother kevin today and just his wonderful message. We just want to lift up uh, Michael and Carrie and Cavills is there uh, on sabbatical and just to pray that that is a renewing and uh, refreshing time for them. Pray that you'll bless this offering. Just use it in your service.
Give these graduates another hand. Thank you. Got some quick things for you to know about. Uh, on Mission Sunday, we advertised all our missions trips. I want to remind you of a couple that are coming on um, pretty soon. Um, you have the ones you know about this summer. But in August, this is a change of date from July to August, is the Owsley County Mission Trail. This is a family mission trip. It's a, it's a trip where you can take your kids on mission with you. Um, this morning we talked about being sent and sent to wherever you work and wherever you live, um, wherever you go to school. But also as a church, we are sent on particular trips to certain places. So Owsley County is neat because you can take your kids and you can introduce your children to mission. So I encourage you to look about that, grab an application. Uh, there's an info sheet out um, on the second floor connector in our missions area if you want to read about that. But that's going to be August 6th through the 9th. That is a Thursday night through a Sunday afternoon. Sunday nights, I want to give you a little preview of what's coming tonight. Adults will be studying Galatians uh, in the Fellowship Hall. Uh, next Sunday night is our annual picnic, change of venue. It's going to be at Falling Springs from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. Excited about that. And then in two weeks, we have a special called members meeting where we're going to discuss the purchase of a new church bus, a 15-passenger bus. So that is in, in two weeks. I want you to be praying about some things in the coming days and coming weeks and today. Um, First of all, as Jody prayed for Pastor Michael, the Cabels are away on sabbatical. Uh, it's been a quiet week. Everybody asks how it's going. It's just the best. It's so great. No, I'm just kidding. We, we miss him greatly. It, it's been really quiet. I uh, didn't realize uh, how much we lean on him. But he is a great pastor and we greatly miss. But pray for him, please. It's something really neat. If you look in your bulletin right below the order of worship, you'll see what he's studying this week. And you can study along with him and, and make sure that he did that when he gets back because you can ask him questions. Uh, but study with him. I plan on doing that. Uh, I think it would be neat if our whole church is on the same page with studying what he's studying as he gets back and just dumps out all this renewal that he uh, is experiencing. Also, I want you to pray for the Ritchie family in the loss of Brock Ritchie. Uh, pray for that whole family. This is a great loss. He was 41. Um, can't imagine losing... Uh, a child uh, can't imagine losing a sibling so please please be in, in prayer for them also big thanks to Clay and the girls the graduates little graduate trio uh, to Will and Samantha and Mark um, we, are, we are blessed by gifted people in this church 
But another thing uh, that Clay has brought up several times in our meetings is how well this choir right here sings. I am blessed to sit down front and to hear our church singing to the Lord. Uh, that is great. Continue to sing out. It is really encouraging to hear as the church gets together uh, to sing. Um, guests, again, we're so grateful that you are here. Uh, I know we have some first-time guests. Come get your guest gift. Or if you're a recent guest and hadn't gotten the gift, come through this door into the family room to the welcome desk so we can give you that gift. We have some gifts for kids. Um, again, if you have any questions, write them on that card. You can hand them to a minister as you exit. Kevin, you got anything? There's a luncheon in the fellowship hall, so if you normally go through there, just be sensitive to that. That's going to be going on luncheon for the graduates. Um, hope you all have a wonderful day and come back tonight. Uh, Clay? Stand up and sing this as we go out today. Lord, I need you.